Welcome to Scraptastic Patchwork. My name is Leah, and we have reached the finale of the Easy Beginner Quilt Series. We're on part seven, and if you've been following along and maybe doing your own quilt, congratulations on getting to this part. If you haven't and you'd like to check out the playlist, it's in my description box. Today, we are dealing with the binding and how to care for your quilt. The first time you put it in the washing machine and dryer and then going forward after that. The bulk of this episode will be about the binding. So let's get right to it. This is the fabric I have left over from making this quilt. Plenty of fabric to make a scrappy binding. But I think that I'm gonna go pretty simple with this binding. And I have one half yard left over. And I think I'm just gonna go with that. And this is the fabric on the border. And I think that looks really good, a really good contrast. And that's what you're going for when you pick your binding. Uh, you certainly can go with fabric that you have in the quilt or coordinating fabric in that collection. Or, you know, I'm a scrappy quilter, so a lot of times I'm dealing with a whole bunch of scraps and I don't have enough uh, solid fabric to do a binding, so I'm just picking all kinds of stuff. The key is you just want it to have some kind of impact on the side. You know, you, you could, if you decide, maybe you want it to blend with either your border or whatever piecing you have. It's really a personal preference. I like it usually to have some kind of contrast. So, and for me, contrast, contrast usually is about color. So that's what I usually go with. And sometimes it's fun depending on the pattern and the piecing. Maybe if you have a simple quilt, you want to have a busy binding or vice versa. Let me show you a few different bindings I have chosen in the past. All right, so since I'm going with this and I have a half yard, let's go over how you figure out how much binding you need for your quilt and if I have enough. So this is a cheat sheet that I have been using for a, a while and I don't use it so much anymore because I make scrappy binding. So... I don't need to find out the exact amount of fabric that I need because all I really need to know is the whole perimeter of, of my quilt, how many inches. I don't need to find out how much fabric I need to purchase in order to get enough binding. However, I wanted to show you guys how to do that. So the first thing you need to do is you measure all sides of your quilt. So both length and width, you add those together, and then you add about 20 inches to that. So believe it or not, because I have, I have thought before, do I really need, that's five inches per corner, you know, so I can get that mitered corner. Do I really need that much? And I have skimped on that sometimes, and I am in trouble. So absolutely you need to stick to that 20 inches. And that's pretty norm. You know, most quilters will do that as well. So it, I will show you how perfect that is when uh, we go to, to finish this binding. You won't believe it. Okay, so mine 
this quilt here, my length is 55 inches, my width is 49. So if I have 55 plus 55 plus 49 plus 49 plus 20, I come up with 228 inches. So I'll just put that. Do I want? Oh, well, I guess I can always redo this. So two, two, eight. That's my length. Now I decide how much width of my binding. So I've talked before how I like a thinner or a more narrow binding. Pretty much most people will do a two and a half inch binding, but I like that just a little bit more narrow. So I do two, two, five, or I do two and a quarter. So this is my width, two and a quarter. Then you divide your length, which is this number, by your width of fabric. So if you have, you know, a width of fabric is from selvage to selvage, sometimes you're going to have 40 inches, sometimes 42, whatever that might be, that's what you're going to div be dividing your length by width of fabric. So it's safe to go with the lower number, which is 40, because m in most cases, you're always going to have 40 inches. So my width of fabric, uh, I'm just going to go with 40. My length is 228. Divide that by 40, and you get, I get 5.7. And what that gives you is how many strips of width of fabric you need. So you would round that up. So in other words, I would, if my number comes to 5.7, I'm gonna round up to six. So I need six width of fabric strips. Now you multiply that width of fabric, so that's strips, width of fabric strips, six, by my width which is my two and a quarter inches. And what I get is 13 and a half. So 13 and a half inches of a full width of fabric piece is what I need for this quilt. So if a half yard, of course, is 18, a yard is 36, that gives you a good indicator of how much fabric you need to purchase or how much you need in order to make a full binding. So I have well under 18 inches if all I need is 13 and a half. So that is how you figure your binding out. Pretty cool, huh? So I have to cut 13 and a half inches or six strips of my binding. So I have my half yard here, and when you're cutting binding strips, because they're thinner, you really need to be careful to get this nice and pressed. So make sure everything's flat, everything's pressed nicely, no wrinkles. Um, sometimes if you are, see, I have this folded in half, and then fold it again. And sometimes when you do that, you can get what's known as an elbow, or just kinda, it's not perfectly straight. So you just have to be very careful. So I'm lining that up on one of my lines on my mat, and I'm gonna start with a straight edge over here. So now I know that's nice and straight. And now, because I want my binding to be two and a quarter, that's what I'm gonna do is two and a quarter. And we're gonna do 
either you can figure that out in your head or you can just <laughs> put it over again and do two and a quarter. I'll put it over so you can see. Three. And you just keep going until you have all the strips that you need. A four. So because I'm a scrappy binder, scrappy quilter, whatever, I usually don't have to do this. I just sew them together and that's fun to do as well. So I'm going to show you how to sew all these together. And so at the same time, I'll, I'll show you why it's fun to do a scrappy border as well. If you've never done one. All right. So that is all I need. I have my six strips and now we're going to sew these together. So a couple different ways to do this. You could either sew them together straight, just right sides together, do a seam. Or what often many quilters do is they do a, on the binding, excuse me, on the bias, a diagonal seam. And what that does is allows you to spread out the bulk of the seams. And so I'm gonna do that right now. But first, because you're, these are full width of fabric strips. I'm just going to go ahead and cut. As I go, I'm going to cut the selvages. So I don't have to worry about that because you don't want the selvages in your binding. Oh, that's right. We're doing this. So I have a directional fabric, so I have to worry about that as well. Or not. Maybe I don't want. Maybe I just want to just fly by the seat of my pants. Okay, so what you wanna do with diagonal seams here is you lay one of your pieces, one of your binding strips down, right sides up, and then you take perpendicular, right sides down, right across the end. And I always allow myself just a little fabric on either side, as opposed to just laying down perfectly like this. So just a tiny bit up here and over here, not much. And you're gonna start at the top left. Now, if you'd like, if you don't trust that you can get this straight, you can absolutely draw a line, a diagonal line first. And where we're heading for is the other corner here, the bottom right. So that's what we're going for is a diagonal seam and then you can cut leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. You now have a spread out seam allowance so it's not all in one area like this it's diagonal so that makes it easier when you go to put your binding on because you'll have half of it over here and half of it over here just makes for less bulk so that is how you sew binding strips together so obviously this is all one fabric but you can how you so scrappy board binding is the same. So here's two examples of some fun strips. And I'll just sew this together quick so you can see the end product of a scrappy binding.
So there you go. That is a scrappy binding. How fun is that? I just love it when they all are different fabrics all the way down your quilt. So that's what it would look like. You can also chain piece your binding strips. So I wanted to show you that before I cut it, that as I'm going and I'm sewing these all together, I'm just chaining them. So the only thing you have to make sure of is that you're not getting your strips twisted as you go. So you just kind of have to follow that strip that everything is not twisted and all of it is going in the right direction. Yep. We're all good. There you go. So I'm going to trim my seams where they came together. And then next step is to press your binding in half. So I just, because I'm right-handed, all the bulk of the strip is to my left. And I start at this end and I just fold it in half, put my iron on it, and I just lift it and fold it, fold it, lift it, and I just keep going. And once I get to a point where I have to pull this aside, that's what I do. Get that in place. And I just keep moving it over to my right. Okay, so after you have pressed your binding in half, then I like to wrap it up like this just to keep it together. And as you go, it kind of helps to keep it controlled. Now, there are a couple different ways you can bind. First of all, you want your the top of your quilt to be at the top, and you're going to start on the right side about halfway down. So that is the beginning. How I like to bind is I like to machine stitch my binding first to the front, so raw edges of your binding to the raw edge of your quilt with the folded edge on the left here. So I start like this and then I sew all the way around a quarter inch and then when that's done then I wrap it to the other side and then I stitch in the ditch from the front. So I never flip my quilt over. Now, there are lots of different ways to do this. You can still do it where you sew it to the front and you wrap it and then you hand sew it to the back. That can be a very fun and relaxing way to do it. That tends to be, I've done it um, in the winter when I'm just wanting to be cozy with a quilt on my lap and maybe watching TV, just hanging out, because it takes quite a while to hand stitch to the back. But a lot of quilters like this because it's traditional and it just ends up being something that they like to do, a, a little hand stitch touch to their quilt. However, it's not very efficient <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with machine stitching it completely. So you could wrap it and then flip it over and then quilt it, excuse me, stitch your binding from the other side. You can do that and I do that if I add my little touch, which is my 
zigzag. And I'm going to do that with this quilt so that I show you why I, I like to do that. I don't like any kind of edge of my binding flipping out. I like to have it completely down. And that's what you do when you hand stitch it, hand bind it, is you're sewing this edge here down. And that's hard to do, of course, in a straight stitch on a machine because you can't possibly get to the very edge. You're always going to have a little flippy going on. But if you zigzag, then that affixes it down to your quilt. So I then have one seam here, one seam in the ditch, and then another seam with my zigzag edging. That's a lot of a lot of stitching, but it just is something that I've developed over the years that I really like. So I am going to show you my way of sewing binding. You certainly can look into how other people do it. I actually learned how to sew the stitch in the ditch method from um, Jordan Fabrics on YouTube. So, you know, there's so many different ways, so many different quilters do it in different ways. So feel free to experiment. I think that that is the best way is just to find out what you prefer, how you like it to look when you're done. Again, it's all those every step that you do, you have to see if, do I like doing it this way? Is it a pain in the butt to do it this way? You just need to find your way. So I'm gonna show you how I like to do binding. And remember, binding is to preserve this edge. So it's something that needs to be secure. It needs to be nice and um, safe for many, many, many washings, as well as this is where people grab a quilt. So you need to have this be very well sewn. Okay, so when you start, you're gonna leave a tail. And I, you can leave anywhere from like nine to 12 inches. Okay, so you wanna do some stitching and then some back stitching to get that secure. And now you're just gonna follow the whole length of your quilt with your binding and you're not gonna pull this too tight. This is a little stretchy, but you want this just to kind of lay on your quilt nicely and you can adjust it to the edge a bit as you go. But you keep going until you get to the end and the corner and then I'll show you how to do mitered corners. All right, I'm coming to the corner. So you will probably have a mark. And I, I think I mentioned this in one of the first episodes of this series. There is a mark here that's a quarter inch horizontal mark. That tells you when your fabric hits that, that that's a quarter inch from your needle. So it, let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna kind of just fold this binding back so you can see where I'm going here. So I'm waiting until that edge of my fabric there is right on that line. So that means from the needle to the fabric is a quarter inch. That's where I wanna stop. Now I pick up my foot and I move this so that my needle and that corner are equal. So it's diagonal now to that corner. And I put my foot back down and then I'm gonna go out to that corner and I'm gonna go back stitch, just a quarter inch to hold that in place. Now I'm gonna pick up my needle and I'm gonna move my whole quilt to the other side and I'm gonna put the binding behind me. 
Now you're going to cut your thread. And this is where the mitered corners come into play. Okay, so you're wanting all your binding to be in front of you up top. And you're going to fold that onto itself so that your right side of your binding here, the raw edge, is equal to the edge of your quilt. So you have a diagonal fold now, which is exactly diagonal to the corner of your quilt. And your edge of your binding is nice, a straight line right here. Okay, that's the first step. So kind of finger press that. Next step is grab your binding and move it on top of itself. And so that your binding is now on top of your quilt perfectly like you've just been doing on the other side. The top fold now of your binding should be at the top of your quilt. So I'm going to do that again for you. You've sewed down on your corner. You've done a back stitch. Lift up your foot, cut your threads, turn your quilt, push your binding to the top, fold your binding on top of itself so that this edge and this edge are straight and you have a diagonal fold to the corner. Then you take your binding and fold it on top of itself. I'm sorry, my thread keeps getting in the way. So that now your binding edge, your raw edge, is again equal to your quilt edge. And the top fold is equal to the other edge. So now you lay it back down in your presser foot. And I start, uh, some quilters start a little bit in, I just do it right on the edge. And I do a little back stitch. And I've lost my binding. All right. And now I sew down this side. And you keep going to the next corner. And we'll do it again at that corner so I can show you yet again. Can I just say that binding quilts, that's my favorite part of quilting. Isn't that weird? No, it's not weird. Okay, so here we are coming to another corner here and I wanted to have you see this again. So I'm coming all the way down to the corner. I'm paying attention to where my fabric is or my quilt. It's equal to that quarter seam mark or that quarter inch mark on my machine. And if you don't have one of those, then just, you can have one of those seam gauges or some kind of indicator to tell you that your needle is now a quarter inch away from the edge. Then you lift up your foot and you turn it so that your needle and foot is pointing towards the corner of your quilt. Put it back down, sew, to the edge of that corner, back stitch, sew off. Cut your threads. Grab your binding, turn your quilt. Put your binding to the top or other side of your sewing machine. You want it to fold over itself. Your fold should be diagonal to your corner and your binding should be 
straight with the edge of your quilt. Finger press that, grab your binding, pull it towards you, fold the binding so that the edge is equal to the top now. And now your binding, the raw edge, is back to the edge of your quilt. Put your foot back down, back stitch, and now you're in business again, going down this side. So do that to two more corners, and then you're going to meet your tail that you started with but don't go all the way i'll show you when to stop okay so now you've come around you've gone all the way around your quilt and you're down to having just two tails one that you started with and one you're ending with uh if you remember when we were talking about having enough binding so here we are this is how much i have left so that 20 inches is very important to add. And you might have more. So I usually like to leave, when I'm first starting this process of ending your binding, just make sure that this part here is at least five or six inches. So you wanna cut this down before you attach these two together. And that is determined by your binding width. So whatever your width of your binding is, mine is two and a quarter. So you want these two things here, these two ends, to overlap by that width. So I'm going to take both of these down a little bit. So this one probably to about there. Because I, I, I like to have more tail on the top end rather than the bottom end. So I'm going to then take my measure tape. And you just want to make sure that these overlap. I just want to make sure my quilt is nice and... All right. These overlap by the width of your binding. So two and a quarter inches is where I want to cut mine down to. So right there, see I've put my measure tape right at the top of this and right where this one hits the two and a half, or excuse me, two and a quarter is where I'm going to cut it. This is harder than I thought it was going to be, because usually I have this, I don't want to hit the camera is what I'm saying. Okay, so two and a quarter is right there. All right. Now the next thing. So this is fairly easy. But for some reason, when I first started, I couldn't figure out, I couldn't ever remember in what order to put these on top of each other. So I kept doing this and this and like, where? Of course, if you want to just straight line stitch these together, you can certainly do that, which would mean you just place one on top of each other. And then sew a quarter seam. But since I sew these together on the diagonal, on the bias, then I'm going to do that when I close this up. So the way I remember it is I always start with the side that my needle is in, or the top side here. 
that's the one I want to place down first. So it's just like you're going to sew any two binding strips together. This one gets placed down first. So this one gets placed on top of this one, right sides together. Just like you did the other strips. So I have a little extra here and a little extra here. Now, if this is kind of awkward because the quilt is attached, you can pin this. This is why it's important to leave. That's why I like to leave the, the longer one on the top because it tends to be easier that way. So kind of finagle this so that, and just for the sake of showing you how it might be easier, I'm going to pin these together. Okay, so those are pinned together now. And like the other strips, you start at the left top and you end at the bottom right. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sew off here. So I'm going to place my foot right. Okay, so <clears throat> cut that. cut and there you have a binding isn't that fun so now you just go back to sewing on the binding line that up This isn't pressed like your other ones will be, or so just kind of get that in place and meet up with where you started. And sometimes you might have just a little bit of a wrinkle, a pucker like I did here. Things get a little stretched out, but if you flip this over You'll barely see that, so it'll be just fine. Okay, so the next step after that is you're going to go to your iron and you're going to press all of these seams open. Now, that's going to take you a while, but I guarantee you, you will appreciate what that does for your binding. I've tried to get away with not doing it and just going directly to start putting this on and it's just, it's not as nice because you want this to be a nice flat seam right here. So you could go th through the entire perimeter and finger press if you'd like, but to me it's just as easy to just to lay each side on my board and just press that open through the whole thing. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so after you've pressed all your seams open, you're going to start at one side, one corner here, and fold it to the back. So we're not going to worry about mitering the corners quite yet. We're just going to, again, this is how I do it. We're just going to pin it or clip it. I suggest clipping. I think pinning a binding is a little too, it stretches it out and it's kind of cumbersome. So I like the clips. So if you have these or if you, I suggest getting some because they're, they're very convenient. So you just fold it over to the other side. Now, 
don't do it too tight because you want this binding to show. So you want it just to barely cover the seam, the raw seam here. That's all you're doing. You don't want it to be too loose where you have extra fabric above the seam allowance. You just, you want it to cover it nicely and lay flat. Because if you do it too tight, then you risk having a really wavy binding. So you just kind of do it enough so that it lays nice and flat. So you go the whole length of one side, just wrapping your seam all the way down. And then we're going to stitch in the ditch, starting here all the way down. So let me clip my one side and then we'll go back to the machine. So this is what it looks like on the back now. And on the front side, we're gonna stitch in the ditch and that will hold it. It'll be about right there. But that way you don't have to worry about flipping the quilt over and then worrying about exactly where to put your line so that it looks decent on the front. So that's why we do this. And I just place my needle right in the corner there. Do just a couple, one back stitch. And now I'm gonna follow right in this ditch, right here. Let's get a little closer. I can right here so let me hold the camera and maybe I can do this at the same time so see I'm just getting that right in that ditch it's kind of fun Okay, so I'm going to do that the whole way down this side, and then I will show you how to miter your corner. All right, I'm coming to the corner here, <clears throat> and I want to show you how to miter that corner. So I just kind of make sure that it is wrapped properly on this side first, all the way. So you look at the back and you want to then, I'm going to try to do this without my, f there, okay. You fold the next side down so that this corner right there is matching. You don't want it to be like this or up like that. You want the corner in the back to match really nice in the corner here. So if you need to, you can hold this or you can do a clip as you position yourself to go around the corner. So what I usually do, since I do kind of one side at a time, is I will go up to that corner. And when I can't have that clip in there anymore, I just double check to make sure it's still holding. I go to that corner. And then I pick up my foot and I turn the corner and just initially I just make sure my binding is good right here put my foot down and then I go down this side and that way I know that corner is set and is okay so then I'm gonna just do one back stitch just to hold it and I can take it off the machine so that, oh, I did get a little shifted there. If you see, it's not perfect. And I might actually go back 
I think it's just hard doing the camera and sewing at the same time. I'm going to take out those stitches and realign that so that I have a good mitered corner. But that's what it looks like on the back. Your stitches when you're doing the stitch in the ditch on the front. So this is what I mean. This is what I don't like. So either I can go back and do a hand stitch or initially I wouldn't have to do this one and just all do the whole thing hand stitch or I add my little zigzag and I do that from the back and usually it ends up looking really nice from the front as well. So I'm going to go ahead and redo this one and then probably show you again because I, I want to make sure that that is looking good. So I redid this. So this is what it looks like from the front. And this is what it looks like from the back. I got a few extra threads I need to kind of trim from going back and forth, but see how that meets nicely in the corner there. And maybe initially you want to do a couple hand stitches to your mitered corner just to get that set before you completely sew your binding. Maybe that'll help you. But that's what you're aiming for, is to have that nicely met in the corner. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my binding and switch to my other machine and I'll show you some of the zigzag that I like to do. And again, this is just an added thing that I do. If this doesn't bother you, then by all means, don't worry about it. Lots of quilts have that. <laughs> For some reason, I have developed uh, an annoyance. <laughs> Before I do the zigzag, I wanna, I, I was going to hand sew the, these two sides of my label onto my quilt. It got caught, of course, in the sewing the binding on, but I need to sew these two down. And I thought as I was about to do that, it's, it's actually how you would sew, hand sew your binding. So why not show you how to do that? So this is a ladder stitch. And what you want to do is you don't want to take any more than maybe a quarter of an inch and you're grabbing on to this side oh it looks like I've got a bit of a knot okay so you grab on to whatever you're sewing together one side and then like a ladder you're going right parallel to that stitch where it came out and doing an, a quarter inch of the other side that you're grabbing onto. So your stitch will be like a rung of a ladder. Now I'm going through not just this layer of the quilt, but also the batting. You don't wanna go all the way through but you want to grab not just this, I mean, if, if maybe a couple of your stitches only get the first layer, that's okay. But you want to try and, and aim for the batting as well. So as you go, you will see that those stitches kind of disappear. So I'm going to grab the top end here. Again, this is hard with the camera. I got to get better equipment so I can do these things better. And then I'm grabbing onto the quilt part right by that another quarter inch. So you see, it's kind of, you don't see the stitches. It's a nice little invisible stitch. And that's how you would go all the way down if you're going to do this to your full binding. 
and it just tacks that edge down all the way. This is my favorite hand stitch just because you don't see it. So I'm going to go ahead and do my whole label here and then we're going to go do the zigzag. I wanted to show you the label. I decided to do some embroidery around this little frame. That way it holds it down better. And then I wanted to show you the zigzag that I did to hold this side as well. So label is done. So now let me show you the rest of the zigzag. Okay, so I just went around um, by the, the back of the quilt up and just did my little zigzag on this little flippy edge, as I call it. So now it's, it's uh, nice and secure. So that's what it looks like on the other side. Has this zigzag line now all over the quilt. And it'll just look like another part of the quilting because I do have some zigzag in this quilt already. So care for your quilt. Let's talk about that. I just got this out of the dryer. It is looking fantastic. Just like I thought, all those little imperfections go away when you wash it. Um, so some quilters will say to go ahead and um, wash it by hand. Others will say you can put it in a wash and dryer as long as you do it on cold and um, tumble dry low. Um, it's awesome if you put it on a line because then you get the outdoors smell yummy. However, I have never cared. I, I want, when I make a quilt, I want that quilt to be something that I use and abuse. And so I need to know that I can wash it in hot water. I have many pets and things happen. So I, the first time I wash a quilt after I'm done making it, I throw a color catcher in so you can get those uh, color catchers and that just makes sure that in case there's still some dye on the fabric um, it it will catch that color so I've even made super dark quilts and never had an issue and I'm not saying that you can't have issues you can but um, I haven't so Throw a color, couple color catchers in there. The first time I wash it, I wash it in hot or warm, whatever I wash everything else up in. And I throw it in the wash on heat. I mean, in the dryer in heat. So I, I just think that, yes, this is a work of art. Absolutely. But it's also something that you're going to wrap yourself in and sleep in and your pets are going to, pets are always attracted to quilts. And maybe you have kids. So I just think that you should treat it like anything else. Now, if I was to be doing some kind of an applique quilt that I spend months and months and maybe even years on, maybe I wouldn't do that. But if I'm just making a regular cotton quilt and just regular patchwork piecing, then I throw it in the wash with no worries. So let me give you a, a closer look at what this looks like now. Okay, so here are some of the areas that had issues with snow plowing and those look much better. Even my wavy lines in my border looks they look better because you got all these crinkly poofy things now that kind of distract the eye i mean if you kind of look yeah you can kind of see the wavy but come on that's nothing 
Let me stretch it out for you. Look how awesome that looks. Oh, I love it. All right, here it is. Let's kind of go in and look at the details. Sorry, there's a few little buggies on it right now. It's near dusk, so, well, not exactly dusk, but afternoon. So we've got some issues here, but again, it's poofing out nicely to cover those. My grid looks great. See how, you know, my border looks fine. Even my back, the lines don't look that bad. See, when you, you just have to remember that when you wash it, it's going to shrink in different ways. And so all those little things that you thought were going to be horrible kind of disappear. So... I'm happy to have made this quilt with you guys. I hope that you gained some insight, especially for your beginners, that not only can you make a quilt, it does take some time and practice and, and skill, but you do not need to be afraid. And I think that's, that's the thing that I'm hoping that you get out of this series the most is by my showing you what can go wrong it's not something that stops you from continuing your journey to make things and especially to make a quilt a quilt is a comfort art so when you make a quilt for yourself or a friend or a family member, the most important part is the fact that you put the effort into it and then that item is going to be cozy for someone. So if they're sick or if they're feeling mentally not good, they can wrap themselves in this imperfect item and feel comforted. That's what the focus should be. Not that you get perfect quilting lines and that you never have a mistake in your piecing. That's not what this is about. This is about making something that helps someone or yourself. So that's what I'm hoping that that you get out of this series is that this is a fun process. Every aspect of it should make you feel good about being artsy and crafty and also that the end product is something that you can look back at and and feel proud of without worrying about all those stupid hang-ups that we think that we need to have about being perfect so thank you for joining me for this series and i will see you soon